Hello, welcome back to Tenant Law Basics. This is a series of short videos looking at landlord and tenant law in England and Wales in the United Kingdom. I'm Tessa Shepperson and today we will be looking at lodgers and lodger agreements. So, we've mentioned lodgers briefly in previous videos where I've said that a lodger arrangement is where you have a residential license, not new rather than a tenancy. Now, actually in point of fact that's not totally correct. It is possible to have a tenancy in a lodger situation, but it's not normal. The normal situation is somebody has a spare room in their house, they rent this room out to a lodger, the lodger lives in the room, they use other rooms in the house in common with the family, perhaps they share the sitting room, they use the bathroom and the kitchen, and then the, 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 the landlord will provide services for the lodger. Normally it's just sheets, changing the sheets, giving clean towels. So that will be a residential license and the, um, the occupant will be a lodger. Now, the lodger arrangement will last so long as the landlord is living in the same accommodation because the essence of a lodger arrangement is that the landlord shares living accommodation with the lodger. So what happens if the landlord moves out. Now if the landlord um, is away from the premises temporarily, say for example they've gone for a long holiday or they've gone to look after their Aunt Mary who's not very well in Scotland, it will continue to be a lodger arrangement because that place will still be the landlord's main home. However if the landlord moves out permanently at that stage then the lodgers will acquire a tenancy because the landlord is no longer living in the property with them. So they will automatically acquire a tenancy at that point. Almost certainly it's going to be in a short, short hold tenancy. And if the landlord knows that that's going to happen, then they should regularise that and give people tenancy agreements at that time. But while the lodger arrangement is ongoing, what are the characteristics of it? And how is a lodger arrangement different from a tenancy? Um, first of all, even if it is a tenancy, it's not going to be in a short, short hold tenancy. So I'll just say that to start with, because very occasionally, lodger arrangements, they can have a tenancy. But as I said, it's rare. Normally, it's a residential license. Now, the first thing to say is that if the landlord takes a deposit, which is not unknown, um, that deposit does not have to be protected in a scheme, because the tenancy deposit legislation provides that the... Um, the rules only apply to a short, short hold tenancy. So as a lodger, as a residential license, or even if they have a tenancy, it's not going to be in a short, short hold tenancy. So it does not need to be protected in a scheme. If it is a residential license, then the landlord's repairing obligations in section 11 of the 1985 Landlord and Tenant Act will not apply. The other very big difference is that the landlord um, will not have to get a court order if they want to evict the lodger. Now the reason for this is down to Protection from Eviction Act 1977. Now the Protection from Eviction Act 1977 is the act which says that if a landlord wants to evict a residential occupier, and it doesn't matter whether it is a tenancy or whether it's a residential license, the landlord must do this by getting a court order for possession and then if the occupier still fails to move out then they need to physically evict them by using either the court bailiffs or a high court enforcement officer or sheriffs. That is the normal normal rule for all tenancies and for all li residential licenses. But in section 3a of the Act it sets out a number of exceptions and one of those exceptions is where the landlord um, shares living accommodation with the lodger. And the living accommodation has to be proper living accommodation. Just sharing a staircase or a cupboard is, won't count. It has to be something like a kitchen, bathroom, sitting room. In those circumstances, the landlord does not need to get um, an order for possession. So that is a significant difference. Um, now, there are a few things that are the same though. So for example, if you are um, a lodger landlord, you will still need to do right to rent checks on your lodgers 
because th these are um, checks that landlords have to do to make sure that the person that they are thinking of, of renting the room or property to um, has a right to rent in the United Kingdom. Now I'm not going to go into any details about this. If you want to find out more, you need to go to the gov.uk site and do a search on right to rent and you'll find copious information there, guidance documents and all the rest of it. Then lodger landlords will also need to obtain a gas safety certificate. They will need to either provide a copy of this to the lodger or um, have it available so that they can see it, perhaps put it up um, on a notice board in the kitchen. And this needs to be done every year in the same way that landlords and tenancies need to do. And then another thing which um, lodger landlords may not think about is that the housing multiple occupation regulations, the HMO regulations, will also apply to them. Now again, I'm not going to go into this into a lot of detail, but um, basically if there are more than two lodgers who are not family members, then that will normally turn the property into a house in multiple occupation. And if there are more than five people living in the property, then it is highly likely that the lodger landlord will need to get um, an HMO license from their local authority. So this is something that if you are um, thinking of renting out rooms in your house to a lodger, you need to be aware of. The final thing is that I'm going to talk about today is that um, the Tenant Fees Act 2019, which is quite a recent act at the time of recording this video, um, will also apply because that applies not only to tenancies but it also applies to licenses so that will include um, lodger licenses and the Tenant Fees Act um, says that um, the landlord can only charge such fees as are prescribed by the Act. Um, now, in lodger situations, you don't normally charge fees in the same way that landlords of, of tenancies do, or particular letting agents do. Um, but one thing that is important is that the Tenant Fees Act also prescribes the amount of deposit that you can take. And normally, the amount of deposit that can be taken is limited to five weeks worth of rent. Now you can take up to six weeks if the annual rent is £50,000 or more. Now that is very unlikely in a lodger situation. So you can't take more than five weeks rent as a um, deposit. So um, one other thing I need to say, um, the law is gradually changing in Wales. Housing is uh, delegated to the Welsh Assembly in Wales and the Welsh Assembly are gradually passing more laws which means that there is starting to be quite a divergence between the law in England and the law in Wales. Two things that I've mentioned here are different in Wales. Firstly, um, landlords do not need to obtain um, right to rent checks in Wales and secondly, the Tenant Fees Act does not at the time of recording this apply in Wales, although I understand that um, the Welsh Assembly have their own legislation relating to tenant fees, which will be coming into force probably in September 2019. Now, if you want to find out more about the law and rules relating to um, renting um, rooms and accommodation to lodgers, I do have a special website about this, which is www.lodgerlandlord. Um, Co .uk. So, thank you for listening and I'll see you again in the next video.